Welcome to Electra Online and one more concept in our ability to understand the bonding theory, the basics of why atoms bound together. We're now going to take a look at uh, atoms that have p orbitals, just like with the hydrogen atom that has an s orbital and the s orbitals can overlap so that the single electrons in each s orbital can share that space where they overlap and form a higher energy density. We can do the exact same with p orbitals. So let's say we just drew one p orbital on this atom, one p orbital on that atom. We have positive charges there. We ignored everything else. And so when they get close enough together and the p orbital can orbitals can overlap like that, we end up with a, a region right here where the two electrons, one from each orbital, one from each atom, can reside most of the time within that region or a greater percentage of the time and therefore form like an electronegative region right here which then would attract to this nucleus for this atom and then would attract to this nucleus from that atom and because of that it forms that strong bond and again the distance between them would be determined by where the lowest energy state would exist. The reason why this can happen, and again, remember that electrons behave like waves, is that whenever waves come together and they are in phase, they will be additive and they will form a, a, a higher amplitude existence of the wave like that, the higher amplitude wave. But if two waves come together and they're not in phase like this, they're exactly 180 degrees out of phase, they will destroy each other and end up with nothing. So the only way that electrons can reside within the same region is if those two electrons then move in such a way that they're in phase. And when they do that, they form this region right here where they can reside together as a pair in phase, exist and form that electronegative region. What we find is that if these p orbitals have two electrons in them each, then when they try to join together, it turns out that then those electrons will be out of phase, they will be like this, and the bonding of that is not very possible, of course. And there's not going to be a 100% destructive situation, but still it'll be destructive to a large extent, and it'll be very, very difficult to form bonds when we have p orbitals that have two electrons in each, it'd be very difficult to bring those together and keep those together. They tend to repel each other, so they're kind of anti-bonding. And we'll take a look at what anti-bonding pairs look like and how we utilize that concept to figure out whether or not atoms can bond together or not, depending upon how the electrons are situated in their orbital. So again, bottom line, the valence band method, bond method as we call it, is simply a mechanization where you only have one electron in each orbital, the orbitals can overlap, they can share a space together between them that will be electronegative because the two electrons will act in such a way that they're in phase, therefore they can exist in that region. This becomes an electronegative region, attracted to positive nuclei, bring them together, and so we call that the sigma PP bond, P for P orbitals of course, and the sigma bond is simply an overlapping bond where they're sharing electrons, uh, where they're each orbital just brings in one of the two electrons to be shared. And so once we understand that, we're now ready to go ahead and take a little deeper look at how electron bonding takes place and how atoms bond together.